Hey there guys and welcome back. Got my thoughts on the new patch that is probably gonna be up a little bit later, but <laughs> um TLDR uh I think all of their changes were actually pretty good. And there's more changes than I thought there would be, but they they did miss a couple. But we'll get right into them. And first up we got Rover Hoog, which now he won't grab a spying unit from your deck. He'll only grab you a silver unit, bronze or bronze door from your deck instead of the silver unit that he could grab being a spying unit. I guess this lessens the consistency of the whole Brover Hoog into Barclay Cleaver combo, which is kind of nice. But I mean, as long as they start with their disloyal unit in their hand, then they still get to pull it off. I mean, it was about 25% of the time that they didn't have their disloyal and they used Brover Hoog to get their disloyal, so I guess does lessen up that combo a little bit, but it's still available, so, I mean, it's kind of weird that they hit the Brover Hoog instead of the, um, Barclay or Cleaver, but, I mean, it is a good thing that he can't grab you not a spying unit now, so that's pretty cool. Next up, we got all the Rune Stones. They now create a bronze or silver card instead of just a silver card, which is a pretty good change, so now... They won't just grab from the silver pool, they'll grab from the bronze and silver pool. <clears throat> I think this usually means that you still have one silver choice and then two bronze choices every time, which lessens the consistency of them grabbing the really good cards from that faction, which can be pretty good. I don't know if these things are going to really be playable anymore. I guess it sort of hits Alchemy Nulf card, but you can still run Expired Ale instead of your Runestone now. Next up we got Olgird Von Everick, which is only good right now because he's bugged, but now instead of, this is one of the ones I was surprised they actually changed because I was going to say, like, if you change War Dancer, Olgird should be changed too, which is what I was saying before because Olgird works the same way. You can't really interact with it unless you're playing monsters, then you can, like, catacon it or something, but now it doesn't even do what it used to do. Now it's Death Wish Resurrect this unit on a random row, so you can't discard it with King Bron and just have it sit in your graveyard to stop the dry pass in round two. Um, supposedly it works well in consumed decks, but right now it only works sort of well in consumed decks because it's bugged to where it resurrects on the same row instead of a random row, so you can have a random warrior eat it over and over again, but still, even then, it's iffy because you need to give consume, like, a long round three or a long round for it to work out for them, because <laughs> you need, like, you need to make a five power play, which is pretty ridiculous in the first place, like, when you make a five power play, You'd have to be pretty far ahead, so I guess you'd have to use up some Neckers and stuff first. But, um, right now Vran Warriors can eat it over and over again, which can get them some value. Because, I mean, if you eat it twice, then you got a 15 power silver, and after that you start gaining value. So that can be alright, just really hard to set up since it's 5 power. Like, you never give Consume a long round 3, so <laughs> this getting value for them is... Pretty much only if you gave Consume a long round 3, in which case they're probably going to win anyway. So that is a change to Olgaird, which I guess is a good change, because, I mean, now nobody gets to stop a dry pass, unless it's something that they set up that you can interact with, like a Resilience unit or Morkvarg, who you can still kill off multiple times or locked. So that's a pretty healthy change for it. Next, we got Black Blood. Create a Bronzer Necrophage or Vampire and boost it by 2, or destroy a Bronzer Silver Necrophage or Vampire. Won't grab you silver ones anymore, so no more Baya, um, Catacon, or Osril, which were the really good choices from this. Now, like, the best thing you can get is probably a Ghoul, making it more a Monsters card again instead of just anybody running this, because it was technically almost better than a Runestone. Then we got Doodoo, -Doo, which I do not know why mine is not changed. It says, still says copy the power of an enemy. It's supposed to be spawn a Reign of Bronze unit from your faction, but... Maybe they redid that, went back on that change, because that was kind of weird. The doo-doo change, I wasn't getting why they even changed them in the first place, I guess to make it easier for starter decks, but that is not changed apparently right now. Next, getting into the bronzes, we got Winch actually got changed, which is awesome. I cannot, I did not think they were going to change this card. Boost all machines on your side of the board by three, instead of creating a random machine, which is really good. Um... They changed pretty much all the bronze create cards, which is really cool. So, I mean, Winch getting changed, that's definitely a good thing. Then we got War Dancer. Whenever you swap this unit, play automatically on a random row. Still says the same thing, but they changed the swap mechanic to where it doesn't count if you do it during your mulligan. So, it only counts if you actually swap it with, like, a unit or, like, a Variety Vanguard or something. Or not... Yeah, not Variety Vanguard, the other one. 
but which is why they give you full value, mill value on Bride Vanguard too, because when you mulligan him, you won't buff all your elves by one. Not sure how you're going to get an elf out when, for the mulligan anyway, when War Dancer got changed, so that's kind of odd. Yeah, we got Bride Vanguard, which the swap mechanic got changed, so now when you mulligan him, him he won't boost all elf allies by one. So, I mean, <laughs> don't know when he would you would get value out of that anyway, unless it was when War Dancer worked the same way. Unless you give an elf resilience, I guess. So that's just the change to that. But it's just because the swap mechanic got changed. Then we got the change to two really, really big cards. Slave Driver and Elven Scout. Slave Driver, set an ally's power to one, then deal the damage to an enemy by the amount of power lost. Um, no more spawning random cards from your deck, which is awesome. Uh, Nilfgaard now has crazy, crazy removal, amounts of removal. I mean, pretty much every bronze card removes cards. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe this would still work in Alchemy. Because, I mean, Alchemy, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I mean, now you have more removal in Alchemy if you ran these guys. Because you can do what? You get a guy up to 15 and then you do 14 damage kind of really hard to set up and it pretty much always works out to be a 10 power bronze or removal so it's iffy but glad he got changed and glad this one got changed elven scout swap a card not really sure where this thing would get you value over the variety officer they pretty much killed this card you just swap a card so i mean pretty much the only cases where it's better than a variety officer is if you swap a spell or an elven war dancer because ride vanguard will only be nine then and this guy gets you one more point, but in every other situation, wherever you swap anything higher than a four, anything four or higher, right? Vanguard's better. So, I mean, that's just how this thing got changed. And now no more spawning out weather clears with this, which is really cool. Uh, I think, yeah, Doppler. Doppler stayed the same, which is kind of weird since they want to change all those bronze cards. Because, I mean, he still spawns a random bronze unit from your faction, but... I mean, that's, only, that's not really ran. It can sort of be ran in some Scully Toll decks, but this one still is a create card that is bronze. And that's it for the changes. They actually changed a bit more than I thought they would. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of cards hit that I didn't think were going to be hit, such as Slave Driver and Elven Scout, but it's awesome that they were. I mean, they still left Viper Witchers alone. So, I mean, <laughs> right now everybody is saying it's a uh, Consume and Great Sword meta because... They nerfed these things too hard, and then they didn't nerf the other ones. But I think that's just because there's a faction challenge going on. I mean, the things that got hit that affected Consume and Great Swords, there was nothing that got hit, except for Alchemy, I guess. But Alchemy will come back, I'm guessing, because, I mean, I'm not going to figure out what you have to change, because I, I will gladly take the time that Alchemy is not here, because it's getting sick of seeing that deck, but we're probably going to see it again, because, I mean, yeah, they got their runestone changed, that's probably not going to be ran anymore, but you just replace that with Expired Ale, and they were already only running two Slave Drivers and a Vicavaro Medic, usually, so now you just have to come up with two cards for your Slave Drivers to replace, so it shouldn't be that hard, I'm not going to try to figure out what they were or anything, because I don't want to see Alchemy right now, but alchemy should still be pretty strong. I don't, uh, as far as coin flip elves go, yeah, they're pretty much they're pretty much done for now, unless somebody really works hard to try to figure out maybe like a hand buff coin flip elves type thing. But still, without elven scout spawning that extra elf, that's going to be really helpful. So I think just because the faction challenge, like the things they affect consume is mandrake, mandrake and stuff like that. It wasn't coin flip elves or alchemy that was really killing the consume it was just the mandrake card from them that was really killing them so i'm not pretty sure consume is not like the top tier and great swords only thing that affected them is alchemy getting hit so they might be around for a bit but i mean now we might see like movement scully toll and stuff which would really hurt great swords because you just move their ships around and stuff so I don't know. It should be a fresher meta, meta for a bit after the faction challenges. I know I'm going to try to build a movement Scully Toll deck probably. Um, but the chance, what we got. I mean, it's not going to affect the game much overall. Probably still going to see great swords and stuff now, and Alchemy should be coming back. Scully Toll is pretty much the only thing that I think is going to be changed, and they'll probably come up with another crazy deck. Something like movement Scully Toll or something maybe. But. 
pretty happy with them. I mean, they hit a lot of things that I didn't think they were going to hit, and that's rather surprising because they said they weren't working on this that much because when homecoming, they're trashing it. I mean, there was a couple things that I wish got hit that didn't, but everything that got hit pretty much made sense. Um, the Viper Witchers, especially. Uh, the fact that they're still going to be a thing once people figure out two bronze cards to swap out in their alchemy decks. Yeah, alchemy is still going to be a thing, so... Viper Witchers was a really powerful card in it because <laughs> it's just crazy removal on the five power. So that's wish that got hit. And then we also got Isengrim Outlaw, who's still a thing and <laughs> will probably always be a thing until the new deck and Siri Nova. These these two cards and then um him him for Skellige is still a thing, which I mean that's whatever, but it isn't the worst one, but I mean, it would have been nice if this thing got changed too, because this is another uh, disloyal unit searcher where you can just gain crazy value off of it. And then the last one that I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't change is um, Triss. Triss Telekinesis. This card ended up being way stronger than I thought it would, and is pretty meta. And it's probably, it's still going to be meta. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Create a bronze special card from either player's starting deck. This thing is amazing. This thing will still definitely be played, so surprised she didn't get hit, but hey, we'll take it, I guess. I guess at least it's a neutral, so everybody can run it, but pretty much Mandrake's probably still going to be meta. It kills a lot of decks, so, I mean, if Great Swords and Consume really end up being big after the whole Monster versus Skellige Faction Wars, then the Artifact Compression and Mandrake are going to be big, and they're just going to be shut down all over the place, so they'll a lot of meta then but yeah that's my thoughts on this guys hope you guys enjoyed and we'll get into some new decks hopefully and i'll see you guys then till then have a good one